Hello and welcome to this episode of the Endpoint Zone with Brad Anderson. Brad, it's been a long time since we've been in the studio. Yeah, you know, it's been like a super busy spring. It's yeah. been like, I've been out of the office, it seems like more than I've been in the office. I know, we have just been out visiting so many customers mm -hmm. all over the world. You've been uh, in the UK, you've been in the Netherlands, you've been in Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a it's been a busy time. There's a lot of yeah. new stuff new stuff that we've got to bring. Boy, out. Lots of new things coming out. So what we actually wanted to do today is get specific on some of the things that we've been doing in terms of how we think about you know Microsoft Endpoint Management and how Config Manager and Intune are working together, and just really help you understand all the new things that are coming, where we enable you to take all that investment, all that experience, all the work that you've done in Config Manager in, for years and enhance that, you know, so you take that proven reliability and those proven capabilities with Config Manager and then extend it to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And as you extend it to the cloud, you get the increased scalability and you get all the intelligence and all of the insights and security that comes from the cloud. So let's talk about how System Center Configuration Manager and Intune work together to deliver on these four promises. It enables you to, it, to deliver that modern workplace in the most secure way. Mm -hmm. It enables your users to be the most productive. Yep. It gives you the most flexibility in how you enable your users. And finally, it's the fastest time to value. This is the combination that everybody should be using. And the reality is I often get these questions from people about, hey, should I be using Config Manager or Intune? Well, the answer is you're already using Config Manager, then the answer is you should be using both because you know both of them is the easiest way for you to then transition to the cloud over the long run. If you were a new organization starting from scratch, had no legacy, no history, I would just go right to Intune and do it all from the cloud. Yeah, and we've made it incredibly easy to pe for people to be able to actually attach Configuration Manager to Intune and really add value yeah. immediately. And that's an important point to talk about. You know, over the years we've developed this bridge or this connection between Config Manager and Intune that we call co-management. Mm -hmm. And what co-management really is, is the two are working together. There's a, there's a communication line between Config Manager and Intune and they're in constant communication with each other adding value. So you know, you think about uh, Intune becoming the edge of your Config Manager deployment. But it also is done in a way where we're able to prevent conflicts from being created to where a conflict, conflicting policy in, or excuse me, where a policy in Config Manager would conflict with a policy in Intune mm -hmm. and potentially brick the PC. Let me give you an example. Without the work that we've done to prevent that, that conflict, you could see where an administrator could set a conditional access policy in Configuration Manager and then a, a, a policy in Intune that is even one setting different. The device would constantly be in this battle of compliant, non-compliant, non-compliant, non-compliant. Yeah. So what we actually do if we detect that there is an MDM agent or authority on the device that is not Intune, what we do is we, we basically move the authority from Config Manager to the MDM for all of the workloads mm -hmm. that we know there's competing, uh, the possibility of having a, a, a conflicting policy set. So that's patching, conditional access, device compliance, um, software distribution. I mean, really, it's, it's kind of the core workload mm -hmm. of SCCM. And so you hear others talking about, hey, we coexist with SCCM. Let's be super clear what coexist means. All that means is their agent is able to coexist on the same device, but there's no communication there's no working together. Mm -hmm. It's very, very different than co-management. And in fact, when we, when, when we see that there is a coexistence model in place, SCCM takes actions, which you know, effectively is, stops you from being able to put policy in place to prevent the conflict from an existing MDM. Now that really does mean that a coexistence approach is actually an inferior approach to being able to oh, do this. That's an it? understatement. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's only possible because we've deeply engineered Configuration Manager and Intune together. They, it's the same team. Yeah, they understand yeah, each exactly. other at every totally. single level. Totally. Um, well, let's dive in, let's talk about some of the yeah. new stuff. So first, I think let's, let's go and take a view of the flexibility. We talk about the most flexible. Mm -hmm. let's, talk, let's look at the, the administrative console and all the work that we've done there to and really empower organizations to manage all of their devices in one common way. So this is the Microsoft 365 Device Management Console. And you can think about this as bringing together Intune and Configuration Manager into one view. Along with the, all the rest of M365. Completely, yeah. And it, you have a separate um, kind of view depending on which particular role you're providing in terms of administering uh, your tenancy. But the cool thing is here, if we go down to this left-hand side, you can see my um, Intune enrolled devices here. And I can look at the status of the devices inside of my organization. Now, what that will show me is here, you can see I've actually filtered this list to be just the devices which are being managed by Configuration Manager and by Intune at the same time. And if I pick one of these devices like, um, I don't know, we'll pick this Surface device. From here, I can go and see some more details about the device. I'm able to pull in all of this data. This is a device which is being managed by ConfigMan and by uh, Intune at exactly the same point in time, but I'm surfacing all of that information directly inside of the same console. Now here's a, a few nice things that we can say 
that we add in terms of the immediate value. I can now go in here and say, you know what, I want to go and wipe this device. I can hit wipe, and it's going to send a wipe request immediately right. down to the device. Which Config Manager can do, because Config Manager is a polling model. Intune is a go do it right now model. Exactly. And that's going to work even if this device is uh, like a laptop that's left the corporate yeah. boundary. It's going to work at any point in time. It's attached anywhere in the world. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic way of being able to add all of that value into an existing Config Manager environment. That's awesome. All right, so we talked about that flexibility. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to see more and more of this work where more and more of Config Manager surfaces up inside of the Intune experience is that one place to go. Let's talk about some of the pieces about the most secure. And let's start with conditional access, which is really is kind of the, one of the crown jewels of what we have built inside of a conditional access or inside of EMS and Intune. Yeah, absolutely. Conditional access is this amazing engine that allows us to look at all of the data that comes into uh, Microsoft 365 from when the user is signing on, where are they signing on, but also looking at the device. How is the device pre presenting itself as it's coming into the environment? One of the very unique things that we've done is we've built in uh, directly with Windows Defender ATP. And Windows Defender ATP will send us um, a risk calculation for that device based on whether or not the machine is, uh, is under attack or not. So I can be inside of the console and I can say, you know what, I'm only going to allow devices that have uh, a low um, risk level um, to be able to access any of my resources, my Office 365, my Exchange Online, all of that stuff can be protected um, with this risk score. Now, I can also set those rules to bring in factors like, are my um, device configuration policies and compliance policies applied to my device? Are my users coming from the right places? All in one single compliance engine. Yeah, so this is just not looking at the endpoint. This is actually taking the learnings of what we call the inner loop of Microsoft 365, mm -hmm. where all these cloud services are actually sharing information and guiding each other on the best way to both enable the user and protect the company assets. Completely. This is yeah. a wonderful. Well, let's, let's also flip to my PC now and show one of the new things that we just put into preview. And it's what we call threat and vulnerability management. Let me just kind of set the stage first and give you a demo of it. We know that all too often, organizations have a breach that is caused by a known threat or a known vulnerability still being open. You know, it, it's, it's far too often where, you know, we've released some kind of an update, and the update could be a year or two, but for some reason, it's still open on our device. I think every security mm -hmm. leader, you know, stay, ha, has nightmares about something being open on their, on their systems that they believe is closed. Yeah. Well, this is a great example of where the power of the cloud can help. So what we have done is up in the Microsoft Cloud, we have a listing of all the known vulnerabilities and threats on Windows, mm -hmm. and because they're known, we also know what the resolution is. So now what we're able to do is we're constantly able to scan all of your PCs, for these known, these known threats and known vulnerabilities, looking to see if for some reason something is still open that would make them exploitable. And then what we do is we give you a prioritized list of where you should focus your efforts at, but then when you say, I also want you to go remediate it, it automatically instructs Intune to go do it, mm -hmm. which then can also work through Config Manager in a co-managed model. So let's actually take a look at the screen here. So what you're looking at here is the landing page, what we call threat and vulnerability management. And the first thing you see over here on the left-hand side is you have what we call an, expo an, an exposure score. And it is mm -hmm. that rating of how, how secure are you. What I love about this is over here on the right-hand side, you get this prioritized list of the top actions that we are recommending that you take as a SecOps team. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and the thing I think to, to point out here is all of us have to-do lists. And I'll guarantee that with most security teams, the to-do list is never completed because it's infinite. Yeah. And so I think one of the things we're able to do with this, bringing this intelligence from the cloud is really help IT and SecOps understand where to focus their precious time at. Now, the cool thing about this list is it's just not a static list. It is off, it's being updated for each individual tenant personalized based upon their threats, but it also is being prioritized based upon what is happening in the world. Oh. And so if you take a look here, you know, down here about halfway down, there's this particular vulnerability that has to do with a, with a media player vulnerability. Well, let's say that all of a sudden there is a new, there, there's actually a payload that's being pushed, you know, through that exploit somewhere in the world. Well, as soon as Microsoft gets signal that there is a new, there is a new payload, there is something that's actually being pushed through it and it's being used, that automatically reprioritizes the list because we're looking at what's happening around the globe. That particular vulnerability now goes to the top of the list for SecOps to remediate. I can come over here, I can get some information about it, I can learn more about it, you know, and then I can start to dig in and learn more about it. And again, this is the SecOps team. And so the SecOps team come, comes and takes a look at it. We want to take a look at the inventory. I can take a look here and see, for example, the different software that has a vulnerability that, that, that is still open. I can actually see exactly what the vulnerabilities are. I can see which PCs have that. And so I'm able to get educated, but here is the magic or one of the pieces of magic, I think just having that prioritized list is the first piece. I can now go take a look at this, and as I start, and I start to dive into this, 
I can actually go and say, hey, what are my remediation options? If you take a look here, because it's a known threat and a known vulnerability, we also know what the known patch or fix is. And it just says, hey, go tell Intune to go do it. Now, when I click on this and submit it, what's happening is it's sending a request over to the Intune console. So this is how SecOps is now communicating with the IT or the operations team. And it's saying, I need you to go fix this exploit mm -hmm. or close this. Here are the PCs that are impacted. Here is the body of work that you have to do. And then SecOps can actually sit here and monitor all of the, the things that are being done. So this right here is the list of all of the activities that SecOps has asked the operations team to go do to make sure that the devices are all secure. Now the cool part about this is this comes into the operation console, into the Intune console. And if I were to flip over and show you that, <clears throat> in the Intune console, you just see the work that is being done. But is it this amazing end-to-end -end scenario where we're able to scan your systems, find out anything that is still open for a known threat or vulnerability, and automatically close it. So it's the power of the cloud, prioritizing the work for the IT pros and for the SecOps team, and then doing the automation to automatically keep the device more secure, keep the company more secure. This is called Microsoft Threat and Vulnerability Management. That end-to-end -end scenario is only possible with Intune and Intune operating with Config Manager. Now you talk about the, the inner loop inside of conditional access and the security thing. It's like the human version of the inner loop, just keeping things mm -hmm. tight and close together between the secure operations team and the IT admin. It's just another example of how as we think about these things and we're able to pull all these cloud services together, it just automates and prioritizes and enables IT to focus their time in the, in the most impactful areas. Yeah, and it's only possible because we do have these engineering teams completely deeply embedded with each other, having conversations every single day. That's right. It's, That's right. it's the kind of thing that you can only do um, when you have the power of something like M365. Now, let's, 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 let's change over to a little bit topic a little bit, and let's talk about the work of helping organizations move from seven to 10, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. You know, we, we've, we've still got a little bit less than a year before the Windows um, 7 and a service, mm -hmm. but there's some innovations that have been built into um, autopilot and some things I think are very interesting, and again, that bring power from the cloud down. Yeah, I think there's a, a, a lot there that people kind of need to need to think about when they're moving themselves onto Windows 10. And one of the pieces of, um, uh, of feedback that we've had from a lot of customers is that they need to, we need to make it easier for them to move that Windows 7 estate up to Windows 10. And obviously, a lot of that Windows 7 estate is being managed by a configuration all, manager. Almost all of it in the enterprise. Absolutely. But in addition to that, people love the concept of autopilot, mm -hmm. and they said, help me enable autopilot for all of my PC estate, just not for the new devices coming in. Have we solved that? Yeah, we have. So if we look at my screen, what you'll see is I'm inside of my configuration manager console here. And um, I'm actually uh, inside of one of my task sequences for um, moving Windows 7 to Windows 10. And what we've built in here is Windows is Autopilot for existing devices as task sequence steps. So now we have these steps that allow us to move um, a Windows 7 PC up to um, a Windows 10 PC using Autopilot. And we're going to make sure that we um, do all of the right things around turning off BitLocker before we start the process, making sure that everything's going to be completely successful, all in that same predictable way that ConfigMan admins are completely used to doing. You know, when the team first showed me this, it just blew me away because this now enables us to prep all of the Windows 7 devices as they come up to 10 to be autopilot enabled from that point forward. Yeah. It's just a huge innovation. It's, it's interesting, let me give a couple of data points here what we're seeing in the telemetry right now. You know, th throughout the majority of 2018, we were seeing Config Manager was upgrading a PC from 7 to 10 about every 0.98 seconds. Since January 1, 2019, that has accelerated to every 0.72 seconds as, as the world is Wow. massively accelerating the move up to Windows 10. And the reality is, Config Manager is doing that for almost every enterprise on the planet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's essential that everybody gets, gets moved up there. There are also these different types of devices that, uh, that exist inside of the enterprise. And some of those different scenarios are, are quite interesting. Shared user devices. We might have multiple users on the, on the same device. Or devices where um, being able to take the, the pre-provisioned experience um, that we're kind of used to with uh, desktop images and moving that into an autopilot world yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's we kind of call it the, the white glove experience. Yeah, so let me actually show you the white gloves. So let's let's uh, flip over to my screen if you can. And so we've actually done a, this is a video just so we can show side by side the PC and a mobile device. And so what we're, what, we're, what we're delivering here, and this is in preview right now, is the ability for someone inside of the company, IT or you know, potentially a vendor, 
to pre-provision the device using autopilot so when the user powers it on for that first time, they don't even have to wait for the apps to come down. Mm -hmm. It's just immediate. So let's kind of walk you through. I'm going to hit play here so you can actually see how this works. And so what you see here is over on the right hand side is the PC that's being provisioned by autopilot. And it goes through and asks me, you know, you, ask the, you answer the typical questions. This screen is new right here. And you can see we've added an option here that talks about Windows um, autopilot provisioning. So what I am here is I'm an IT professional and I'm going to pre-provision this device for my users using autopilot. And so, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to click on that option. Now watch over on my mobile device over on the left-hand side of the screen here. I'm going to come over to the left-hand screen. I'm going to log in as, a, as an administrator. And then the process to do this is going to be all automated using a QR code. Mm -hmm. So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, select that I'm the administrator, select that. And then what you're going to see here is it's going to, it's going to go through a little bit of a process, but it's going to bring up the camera. I'm going to select a picture of the QR code and then I'm going to be able to automatically assign that to a user. Now you can also assign devices to users in the administrative console, but this is a very innovative way to do it in real time as you're provisioning the devices for the box. So I just took the picture you see there. I'm now going to come in here and assign that to a user. You watch how I'm going to select the user here of, uh, of Murphy. Now watch over on the right hand side, you'll actually see that when I say assign the user, on the right hand side that user pops up now as the owner of the particular device. And so what this is doing is, is allowing IT to actually have that device entirely provisioned so that when the user just pops it on, they are productive immediately rather than have to wait for the apps to come down and download. Yeah, I think that's the kind of thing that's going to be a transformative experience for um, IT and for being able to move these devices forward onto Windows 10. Mm -hmm. And this is the white glove of Windows Autopilot, which I think, you know, as we've talked with the organization that's using it, it's amazing. Now, what you're seeing here further is we've actually now even assigned a second user to the device. Mm -hmm. So you can even do this on a shared device so you can actually pre-provision all the applications on the device that multiple users would need. That's just amazing. Yeah. I think that's exactly what people need to be but able to But it's another forward. example of how we're taking the power of the cloud and bringing that power and adding it to what people already are using. And again, you know, if I was a new company starting from scratch, I would go all in tune. But the reality is almost every company on the planet is starting from config manager. So through code management, this just brings the power of the cloud and makes them more efficient, more effective, more secure. Yeah, that's exactly it. None of this is possible unless you have the power of the cloud behind you. 100%. Um, speaking of which, across on, uh, on my PC, part of that entire journey is actually making sure that the users have the right apps at the right time on the right devices and really getting the information uh, that they need down to them. Now, a piece of that, of course, is making sure that um, we have things like our apps deployed in the right places. So what you can see here is I've actually got, um, inside of this console, I've got the Office 365 um, Pro Plus suite for Windows 10 deployed, and I've got the same suite deployed for Mac OS. I'm just going to show you how simple it is to actually do this, because a lot of IT admins are asking us for ways to be able to do these quite complex tasks, make it much easier for me. And if you think about deploying uh, Office Pro Plus, it should be simple. It's coming from the cloud. We want to make sure that it installs reliably and predictably on all of these devices. So all I have to do here, I don't have to go and find my source for um, Mac OS or for Windows or anything like that. I literally have to go into the console and just say, this is how I want my Mac OS deployment to be configured. I need to give it a name. Uh, let's call it Office. Um, enter a quick description. This is Office. It's published by Microsoft. Category automatically filled out as productivity. Um, we can choose whether or not we want to display this in the company portal on Mac OS um, so that people can choose to install it. I might be deploying this as a required application anyway, so it will just be appearing on the device. I can provide all of those extra pieces of information, but all I'm doing is providing a little bit of metadata. I don't have to get hold of the files and upload them um, and think about distribution. I click OK and it's created. That's it. Well, it's an important point, I think, to point out here for a minute. I think this is a place where our naming actually works against us, because if you were to ask you know, many people, hey, what's the version of Office I should be using? Office Pro Plus or Office 2019? Mm -hmm. you know, it's Pro Plus is what we want everybody to use. Pro Plus is the version that is cloud attached. Yes. Yeah, and so again, it's a place where the naming works against us, but you know, one of our biggest asks to everybody is put the power of the cloud into the hands of your users. This is where we talk about this enabling users to be the most productive. Mm -hmm. And so our, our endpoint management is how you enable people to be the most productive. And one of those pieces is using Office Pro Plus on the devices. So why don't we jump in and actually look at some of the Pro Plus capabilities? Well, actually, I want to save that for a, a little tiny bit later on. Um, I just want to, to dive into um, one of those things that we want to, to do on people's devices, which is also to be able to get back the, the encryption information. Oh, that's right. So that we can make sure that when, we, when we're encrypting Windows 10 PCs, that we're turning on BitLocker, that we're actually getting 
um, the, the right kind of status back about those devices. So again, here in the console, I'm inside of my uh, reporting on encryption. And this is actually showing me across my devices, across my Windows devices in this case, where are we on that journey of encryption? We can see that I've got devices that are not ready for encryption and devices that are ready for encryption. And in this case, I'm actually looking at this, uh, this particular device here. And on the right hand side, we can see that the encryption method of the OS volume doesn't match the BitLocker policy. So maybe I'm not providing um, a high enough level of encryption on that device right now. Maybe it's uh, only, only set to encrypt to 128 and it needs to be moving up to 256 bit AES encryption. It allows me to know exactly what the remediation step is. But the new thing take. here is all the BitLocker uh, management capabilities are now built into Intune, Absolutely. which then allows that to even extend it on top of Config Manager. So another new value in the cloud to extend what we do today. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really powerful that we have all of these capabilities in here. Um, we also have um, made some pretty major strides forward on peer caching as well. That's a good point. Let me just talk about this for a minute. One of the biggest things we've heard as organizations have been moving to, you know, using Intune in the MDM layer is the impact on the network if they're not using peer-to-peer -peer capabilities. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we've been noticing is just how much more all of the peer, just the native pieces that are built into, into the management tools as well as into Windows, how much they're being used. And it's just skyrocketing. I mean, we are literally seeing organizations using the peer, cap, peer caching capabilities that are just built in and in some cases saving 80 and 90% of the bandwidth that would have been utilized without it. And so as, as you think about how you utilize all the new capabilities that are coming into the, all of our endpoint management capabilities, the built-in peer caching is a lifesaver mm -hmm. as you think about how you deploy these apps, these Win32 apps across your enterprise and estate. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, that also counts for the apps that we can deploy, like the Office 365 apps. Right. Those are obviously not the offerings of all the apps. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Um, there's one other thing that I just have right next to my hand here. Well, I completely forgot we were going to talk about this. Just want to touch on this thing for a second. We're kind of covering a lot of the different devices that we support: iOS, Android, Mac OS, obviously Windows. Um, one of those types of devices is also Zebra devices. Um, these are really common devices um, in hospitals, in retail, retail. Um, lots of manufacturing, uh, warehousing, distribution. Mm -hmm. They're basically um, incredibly powerful devices with great scanners on them that allow you to scan barcodes. So this particular Zebra device is actually being configured with Intune. If I go into this now, device, The new announcement here is we support these devices, which we haven't done in the past. That's a very good point, yes. There we are actually um, bringing in Zebra support. So you can see on this screen that I've actually got um, my company apps configured in this case. Um, I've got Word on here, I've got Outlook on here, I've got the company portal on here. It's a fully managed device inside of Intune. I'm just going to switch across into my console for a second on my PC. And what we'll see here is that I can actually create one of these profiles. So if I go in, I can see that I'm naming um, my profile. In this case, I've just used the name Zebra. But the platform I've selected is Android. These are devices that run Android. And in this case, I've actually selected um, my MX profile, which is for Zebra only. It's a special type of profile, which device. is just yeah. deploy deployed for Zebra. Now, this is, again, it's one of those kind of uh, interfaces, what I actually need to do is upload an XML file, and then I can push that XML file down to the device, and that's how I configured this particular device. I can control all of the, um, the settings that I need to on a Zebra device, thanks to our deep partnership that we've got in place with Zebra. Yeah, there have been a number, number of organizations waiting for that announcement. Yeah, I think it's going to unblock quite a lot of customers. Oh, for sure, for that. sure. Okay, let's get back to Office now. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk let's about how the Microsoft endpoint management capabilities uh, really empower users to be the most productive. Absolutely. We're going to switch across to my um, iPad that's just here. This is an unmanaged iPad. It's using just Intune app protection policy to protect these apps. Um, I'm going to go into Outlook, and you can see within Outlook that I've actually received this email uh, from Alice, and it's a le leadership presentation that she wants me to work on. I'm going to go and hit Open. Now, what's going to happen there is it's going to open it up in the default viewer on iOS first, so we can take a look at it. You can see it's not quite as perfect as it, we want it to be. But just down here, I've actually got a link to the leadership site. So Whilst I'm here, I'm just going to go and quickly review that. You see it's a SharePoint site. What's going to happen is because of the configuration policy we have in place for um, Outlook and for the managed browser or now Microsoft Edge on this device, we've actually opened into Microsoft Edge, automatically provided single sign-on directly into that Office 365 site because I'm already signed in on this device into Outlook and some other applications. Haven't needed to prompt the user for, for their password. Awesome. Reduces the chances of phishing. Let me just go back into uh, 
that view and go into PowerPoint. From within here, you can see that I can actually directly edit my, um, my PowerPoint slide inside of PowerPoint. But let's go and just try and copy some of this text and try and leak some of the information outside of the application. If I go and hit copy, we'll go and into the notes application, just paste it, paste. Organizations data cannot be pasted here. All of the controls that we've shown previously are all in place. And that is a unique requirement. Uh, that's a unique capability of Intune because all those MAM capabilities are just built natively into the Office apps. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, all completely natively built in. So if we switch across to my PC now, um, I want to continue working on that presentation. Let's say that I was on the train, I was working on it, I just got into the office, and now I want to continue working. And might wanted need a bigger to, screen, wanted a mouse. Exactly, yeah, I wanted the full fidelity of Office Pro Plus, actually. So I'm going to open up PowerPoint. Now, normally I'd have to think to myself, oh, I've got to go and find the email where she sent that to me. But not when you're in the Microsoft 365 world. PowerPoint automatically knows what the last file I was editing just now yeah. on my PC. I love the fact device. that it follows you across devices. All, always with me, everywhere. We have that complete mobility of the experience. Um, really, really cool stuff. And so again, this is power of Office Pro Plus you don't get if you're using Office 2019. We keep talking about this power of the cloud and giving that in the hands of your users. And Office Pro Plus is so core to this across your devices. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to go j just very quickly into here, um, and I'm going to add a new slide into this deck. So I'm just going to insert a new slide here. And on this slide, I'm going to just paste in uh, a picture that's already on my clipboard. And you can see that on the right-hand side, design idea just kicks in immediately. It's automatically just telling me different ways that I can present my information, tidy it up, do a better job of creating a PowerPoint. But people may not realize this is actually communicating with the Microsoft 365 Cloud. This is AI that is looking at the content on the slide and coming back with ideas for you to help you build beautiful, high-quality slides. Yeah. You know, and this, this happens millions and millions of times a day. And it's one of the most intriguing powers, I think, of how we, how we enable um, organizations and their employees to be better, to be more productive. And it's just built into Office 365, into the Pro Plus applications. And again, everybody needs to get on Pro Plus. Yes, it really is an amazing experience. Now, I want to extend the experience a little yeah. bit. Um, if we can just uh, pretend for a moment that you are me. Yeah, um, so this my dream my, all my life. <laughs> this was my work PC. I was at work. Um, I've now gone home, and I'm at home. I don't have a PC yep. that's connected to my work at all at home, um, but I've just got a browser, and I've signed in, and I've gone to the office.com site. Uh, if you pick it up from yep. there, you'll see that there's a presentation. So this is an unmanaged PC, so by nature, this is an untrusted. That's yeah. a trusted device, this is an untrusted device. But you now have, with Microsoft 365 and with Intune, the ability to set these conditional access policies that even enables your users to use applications like the Office web apps on an untrusted device. So I log in and look right here. Just like on your PCs, it knows what, what I was working on last. So I'm going to go open up this, this presentation that you were working on. And it's going to come up here, and all the edits that you had in place, it's all going to be done because it's all being stored in OneDrive for business. Mm -hmm. And it's just all been built into the Microsoft 365 ecosystem about how this all just works and empowers me. Now, one of the great things about this is we have this unique ability, right? There's a the slide you were working on. Yeah, and one of the cool things was I didn't save it. I actually just you know, it was auto -save. It open. Yeah, yeah autosave worked. Now, one of, the, one of the amazing things about this is the promise that, that we're able to give to IT here. You can enable your users to have this amazing experience, even work on corporate confidential data on an untrusted device, mm -hmm. and we guarantee you the data will never leave the browser. Yeah. Notice the little yellow bar here that talks about, hey, there have been certain things that have been disabled by your organization. You can't sync it, you can't download, you can't print it. If you notice here, if, if I was working on a trusted device, it'd have a little option right up here where my arrow is that would say, that would say open in PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. We only enable you to open it up in the Office web apps. That enables us to make sure that the data is always kept in the browser. When the browser is shut down, all data is, is, is gone off the device. So empowering your users, making them the most productive, but still delivering all the security and manageability that IT requires. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, if we switch back over to, to my corporate managed PC, I'll give you the exact same view that, we're, that we were seeing there um, inside of the corporate managed browser. And what you'll see is there isn't, the, there isn't a, a yellow bar. I've got the exact same data. And I can actually open this document in PowerPoint just with one click. So it allows me to have all of that flexibility wherever I am. Amazing. And then it's such a, I think it's a, such a wonderful example of how we've worked across Microsoft 365, across the engineering teams, to deliver that modern workplace that, as I described, is loved by users and trusted by mm -hmm. IT. Yeah. Okay. So let's just wrap up here. Holy cow, there's been a lot of content. 
What we've walked you through is how you connect the cloud to the existing investments that you've made with Config Manager and you have the, really all of the endpoint management capabilities from Microsoft. You truly do have the solution that gives you the most security, makes your users the most productive, mm -hmm. it's the most flexible across all your devices and across all the different application kinds, and it's the fastest time to value it, the fastest time to give any value to your users. Those are tremendous promises. And that's what we promised you and what we've built in our endpoint management capabilities, which is Config Manager and Intune working together in a co-management place. Yeah, I think the next, next best step for everybody out there is uh, if you're using Config Manager, which, which everybody people is. are, um, and you've got an Intune subscription, connect the two things together. Start actually taking advantage of these things. Well said. Yeah. We will see you next time on the next Endpoint Zone with Brad Anderson. Thank you very much for watching.